Welcome to the Independence Party of Minnesota, putting Minnesota first. My name is Mark Jenkins. I am the state party chair of Minnesota's third major political party. For those of you who aren't familiar with us, the Independence Party was founded in 1992. We achieved our major party status in 1998 with the election of Jesse Ventura to the governor's seat. The Independence Party has maintained its major party status ever since. Minnesota has been represented in the U.S. Senate by Independence Party Senator Dean Barkley, who was appointed by Governor Ventura after the tragic death of Senator Paul Wellstone. We've also had two state senators. Those would be Senator Bob Lassard from International Falls in the 2000 session and Senator Sheila Kiskaden from Rochester in the 2002 session. The Independence Party of Minnesota is just that, a state party. We are a Minnesota party. We have no national affiliation, which gives us some freedom to focus on issues that are important to Minnesotans, not issues that are nationwide. It allows us to tighten our focus and help every Minnesotan. Now, some people believe, because we're not as extreme to the left as the Democrats and we're not as extremely conservative as the Republicans, that we're centrist or moderates. Fact of the matter is, our own delegates could spend an entire day debating over which word is more appropriate, centrist or moderates. But I want to make sure there's no mistake. The Independence Party of Minnesota is not a milquetoast moderate, and we're not fence-sitting centrist. The Independence Party of Minnesota is more than willing to take strong stands on issues that are important to every Minnesotan. Governor Ventura described the Independence Party as being fiscally responsible and socially tolerant. The best example I can come up with for a strong issue and social tolerance is the Independence Party's brave stand against the marriage amendment this last election cycle and its executive committee's continuing support for legislation that just passed ensuring that all Minnesotans have the same individual and civil rights. The Independence Party's stand on the marriage amendment and on a marriage equality legislation was nothing to do with support of political definitions of marriage, but it was an important stand to make sure that all Minnesotans have the same rights, and it was a stand that this party was proud to take. Our core values contend that we also believe in government policies which encourage and expect personal responsibility. An example of how we're going to address that core value is going to come up at our state convention in June. One of the resolutions that our delegates is going to vote on is the legalization of marijuana. Now, this seems to be a pretty popular move in some states, and we're going to find out if the Independence Party delegates support this move for Minnesota in June. What is true, though, is that our government spends billions of dollars trying to prevent, prosecute, and punish marijuana users. And in that effort, it prevents cancer patients, glaucoma sufferers, and others who are suffering from treatment-induced pain, a medically viable alternative for pain relief. You'll have to tune back later to find out if the Independence Party decides this is an issue of personal responsibility that we're going to bring forth as a key point or something we're going to save for a later date. When it comes to fiscal responsibility, the core values of the party state that we believe in a government that is fiscally responsible, equitable in its collection of taxes, careful in its spending, and honest in its financial reporting. <laughs> a fair and balanced budget. Seems like a simple thing. Even when you put one party in control of the state house, the state senate, and the governor's office, you would think we'd be able to come up with one path to a fair and honest budget. Unfortunately, that's not the case, and we'll talk about that more near the end. One last thing beyond fiscal responsibility and social tolerance is the Independence Party's belief in fair and, and political reform. You know, our core values claim that we believe in a democratic process with integrity, and broad citizen participation. You'd think from the voter ID debates recently that those are two mutually exclusive things, but they're not. You can have voter integrity 
with broad participation. And just one of the many reforms we support, and we've been longtime supporters of, is ranked choice voting. I'm going to quote from Fair Vote Minnesota's website on what ranked choice voting is. Ranked choice voting allows voters to rank candidates on the ballot according to their preference. First choice, second choice, third choice, etc. Voters cast their vote for their favorite candidate knowing that if he or she doesn't garner enough votes to win, their vote will count toward their second choice. In a single winner election, votes cast for the least popular candidate are not wasted, but simply redistributed to the more popular candidates based on the voters' second choices, until eventually one candidate wins with a majority of the votes. The Independence Party is not unfamiliar with people saying that our votes are wasted. Well, the fact of the matter is ranked choice voting ensures that no vote is wasted and that every political winner has the support of the majority of Minnesotans, not just the largest minority. Please check out fairvotemn.org to learn more about this important election reform. So we've talked about where the party started, we talked about what we believe in. Let's talk a little bit about what we're not. The Independence Party of Minnesota is not the anti-other party party. We already have two of those. The Independence Party of Minnesota is going to take strong stands on issues. We don't always agree with the Democrats or the Republicans, but where we do, we will gladly stand side by side with them and make sure that we support fiscally responsible legislation or socially tolerant legislation and we will partner with the team that we need to to make sure that those policies pass. I like to tell people that the Independence Party of Minnesota is a lot like, ba or is a lot like baseball. Actually, politics in Minnesota is a lot like baseball. You can compare the state capitol with Target Field. At the state capitol, there are plenty of people defending left, just as there's a left fielder defending left field at Target Field. Likewise on the right, both at the Capitol and at Target Field. But that analogy doesn't stop there, and that's the problem. Because when you get to the Capitol, and there is a play in right field that supports strong fiscal responsibility, you rarely see a player from the left cross the field to back that player up. Just as no left fielder is ever going to run all the way over to right to back up a play in right field. And the analogy goes both ways. You don't see people from the right backing people from the left when it comes to social tolerance. What Minnesota needs is a strong center fielder. Someone who's going to back up fiscally responsible legislation and two hitters later cross the field and back up the left when it's socially responsible, socially tolerant. Minnesota needs center fielders. Because the other thing a center fielder does is something that neither the right or the left is doing at the state capitol. And that's addressing important legislation that neither of them want to address. And I will contend, and we'll talk about this more later, that our history and our reliance on imbalanced budgets is one of those issues. This year, watch for the Independence Party to play center field and take on issues that neither party will, will abide. Watch for the Independence Party to take a strong stand on Minnesota's constitutional requirement to pass and implement a true balanced budget. If you want to learn more about the Independence Party and where we stand, please check out our website, our Facebook page, Twitter, email, all of that stuff on the board that's going to come up right after I'm done. Thank you. Now I want to talk to you about how the Independence Party is going to win politically in the state of Minnesota. And then, most importantly, how you can help. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to continue to focus on results that benefit everyday Minnesotans. Not corporations, not unions, and not the special interest groups. 
but benefits every Minnesotan. And one of the ways we do that is being willing to look beyond immovable ideologies and find workable, innovative solutions to the problems that face Minnesota. One example that's really important right now in the state as we discuss our state's budget is whether or not we stand for an ideology that says tax the rich or cut taxes. We believe there's a middle ground. And Tom Horner, our Independence Party endorsed candidate for governor this last election cycle, brought forth a proposal that was going to broaden the tax base, making Minnesota's taxes more stable, and also reduce the tax rate. It's an idea that the Republicans flatly denied, flatly refused. They won't vote for anything that raises a tax on anything. Yet even Republican vice presidential candidate Paul Ryan, in his proposal for the federal budget, broadened the tax base and brought down the tax rate. We're willing to look at innovative solutions to help the state, not just stick with tax the rich or cut taxes, which right now are the only two phrases you're hearing out of our capital. Another thing we're going to do is focus on Minnesota's long-term fiscal, social, and political well-being. You know, and, and we're not going to focus on the next election. You know, it used to be that elections ended at 8 o'clock on election night, and governing started the first day of the next session. Unfortunately, we've gotten ourselves into a situation where today, legislative action is often designed to generate election night returns and results. We're going to focus on solutions for the state, not elections. How do we do this? We're going to continue to put forth the most qualified candidates for every office. Taking the governor, for example, we've had candidates such as Tim Penny, Peter Hutchinson, and Tom Horner. Yet, even when we put forth the most qualified candidates, there are still some people out there who contend that our candidates are nothing more than spoilers. You want to know what I tell those people? Yes, we are spoilers. And we're going to continue spoiling elections until one of two things happens. Either the other two major parties are going to continue to go farther and farther out to the edges and continue to represent fewer and fewer Minnesotans. And mainstream Minnesotans recognizing they're being ignored and unrepresented are going to turn to the party that will represent them at the Capitol. And then we start spoiling elections for two parties because we're going to start to win elections. Now, there is another alternative. Those other two major parties recognize the gap. They recognize the Minnesotans who are begging for representation, and they start to moderate their message. And they start to return to the center, and they start to represent every Minnesotan. And all of a sudden, with every, represent, with every Minnesotan represented by the other two parties, the Independence Party becomes irrelevant. And we win. We win because we brought representation to every Minnesotan. That's been our goal from the start, is to have a state government that represents all Minnesotans. Not just the extremist on either side, but every one of us. Either way, we're going to win. Right now, I think the odds are much better that we're going to start winning elections rather than seeing the Republicans and the Democrats do anything close to moderation. Now, just one note on the spoiler argument. I do want to point out one thing. Do you ever notice it's always the loser who calls us spoilers? Well, the winner's never going to blame anyone else for the victory other than themselves. The winner's going to believe they did the best thing and they're the best representative for you. But the losers always look for a scapegoat, and it tends to be us. So when you hear someone use the spoiler argument, why don't you ask that candidate this? Is it possible that you weren't able to convince enough Minnesotans that you were the best candidate and you could best represent them in the state government? That's probably more likely. Heck, 
We've had a lot of practice at that. And you've never heard us say, darn, if it wasn't for the Democrat or the Republican, we would have won. So we will spoil elections by winning them eventually. And we're going to continue to work on that. So how can you help? The important question. Here's the first most important answer. Vote. With a caveat. I want you to vote for the very best candidate you believe in. Not for the Democrat, not for the Republican, and not for the Independence Party candidate. Don't vote for labels. Vote for the best candidate. Because if you vote for the best candidate, your vote can't be wasted. And our elections can't be spoiled. It's up to you to vote for the best candidate, and it's up to me and the leadership of all political parties to make sure we put forth the, that best candidate. Second, get involved in issues. What are the issues that are important to you? Get involved in an issue organization, a nonprofit. Get onto a local city commission or committee. Make sure your voice is heard, because I will guarantee you that politicians listen to Minnesotans, but they listen closer to those people who are actually engaged in the issue. Third, take that issue orientation, take that willingness to get active, and bring it to a campaign. Who is that best candidate? You know, they can use your support. They would love for you to make phone calls, hand out literature, knock on doors, and oh so important, help them raise money for their campaign. The best candidate is going to help bring your voice to the state capitol, the city council, the county commission, whatever it is. Please get engaged in your local elections. And once you've done all of that, please think about bringing that passion for issues, that willingness to get engaged, and bring it to a political party. Because Minnesota politics isn't suffering just because of Democratic ideology or Republican ideology. It's suffering from a lack of voices. You're only hearing from the extreme left. You're only hearing from the extreme right. And we, the Independence Party, are trying very hard to represent every other Minnesotan. You're one of those Minnesotans. Make sure your voice gets heard. And again, I don't care which party it is. If you lean a bit to the left and you think that the Democratic Party can help, get involved. Help bring more voices more varied voices to whichever political party you get engaged in. Now, I'm a bit biased. I'd love to see you help represent Minnesotans from the middle, those that lean left, those that lean right, and help us represent moderate, mainstream Minnesota majority. But if not, please engage. Minnesota needs more voices and more varied voices than we have today. And that's where you can help. Thank you again. We'll be back after the break to talk about an issue that's extremely important to Minnesota this month and every month. One issue that's important to all Minnesotans every day of the year is whether the state has a balanced budget. This is, what, this is the discussions of how your schools get paid, your city services get funded. And at the beginning of this session, Governor Dayton promised that there were three things that were vitally important to Minnesota's next budget. That it have no one-time fixes, no gimmicks, and no borrowing. Unfortunately, the budget that's being debated this very day as we film this um, already is going to reflect one-time fixes. Amongst those are a one-time cigarette floor stock charge to partially pay for the stadium shortfall. Another one-time fix is shifting $75 million in Health and Human Services budget by requiring hospitals to pay their 12 months 
worth of surcharges in the nine-month period that occurs in the next fiscal budget. In other words, they're collecting the money early, leaving a $76 million debt to be recaptured in the next fiscal budget. And again, it's a one-time shift. No gimmicks. Well, if no gimmicks was important to the governor, then shifting $400 million of Health and Human Services budget from the general fund to a health care access fund, which, by the way, is unfunded after 2019, um, is pretty gimmicky to me. And lastly, no borrowing. The governor said that we will not borrow to balance this budget. What he didn't tell you is he's also not going to pay back past borrowing because it would imbalance this budget. Well, our contention is, is not paying your debts means you still have debt. And this budget is no more balanced than the budget before it. Now, Governor Dayton also said it was important that everyone pays their fair share. Yet, the budget that they're debating today is going to show an increased tax rate from 7.85% to 9.85% on the wealthy. But that doesn't translate into the same increase in revenue at least not without addressing the loopholes and the deductions, because much of this increased assessment is going to get lost when the highest taxed Minnesotans use these loopholes and tax deductions to become the lowest paying Minnesotans. Lastly, in this section, the governor promised to reduce your property taxes. And how he did this is by introducing local government aid to your cities to help pay for projects. His thought and the legislature's thought was by giving money to the cities, they'd reduce your taxes by the same amount. I can tell you from experience with many cities in the state that after 10 years of backed up unfunded projects because of unkept aid promises from the state, cities are gonna welcome this money they're going to start to pay for backlogged projects, and Lord knows at best you're going to see a flat tax from year to year, but you certainly aren't going to see a tax cut from any city that I'm familiar with. So, with a budget that includes gimmicks, one-time fixes, and no paying back of debt, here we are again. You know, I honestly thought when the Democrats won the House and the State Senate and the Governor's office, I fully expected them to come in, raise taxes by billions of dollars, and balance the budget and pay for lots of their pet projects. And there is some good legislation on education and there's some good legislation on health care. But the fact of the matter is, they only did half of what I expected. They did raise the billions of dollars. And they did pay for some projects, but they still refused to balance the state's budget. With that in mind, I want to remind people what the state constitution says about a balanced budget. This is from Article 11, Section 6 of the state constitution. As authorized by law, certificates of indebtedness may be issued during a biennium commencing on July 1 in each odd-numbered year, and ending on and including June 30th in the next odd-numbered year. In anticipation of the collection of taxes levied for and other revenues appropriated to any fund of the state for expenditure during that biennium. What that means is the only debt the state can incur constitutionally has to be paid back in the same biennium. What that means is the budget shifts for schools for this last budget needs to be paid back this biennium or we will be constitutionally imbalanced on our budget. Fact of the matter is, is we've been constitutionally imbalanced in our budget for more than a decade. School shifts seem to be the government's favorite extra piggy bank. Instead of, you know, cutting cost, they go to their kid's bedroom and steal out of the piggy bank of their kids to pay for their excess credit card debt. 
Well, so what happens? Republicans continue to complain about the imbalanced budget when they're not in power, and they use it as an election tool to try to get back into office. In which case, then, when they're back in office, they pass an imbalanced budget, and the Democrats replay the same thing, using the imbalanced budget as an election tool. Yet neither the Republicans or the Democrats are willing to address the fact that the imbalance in the budget has been a bad habit for both parties for more than 10 years. With that in mind, the Independence Party on May 19th at the state capitol is going to hold a press conference. At that press conference, I am going to present the Independence Party's response to the budget that will have been signed by that date. The Independence Party is done complaining about imbalanced budgets in the state of Minnesota. Hey, we've been guilty of it of ourselves, complaining about the budget and using it to try to win elections. Well, we're done trying to use political issues for election gain. We're going to go back to our core values and we're going to do what's right for Minnesota. So, if the current budget for 2012 to 2013 is not balanced by December 1st of 2013, including repayment of outstanding school funding shifts, and all of this is required by the state constitution, the Independence Party will file a lawsuit to compel the state auditor to balance the budget using the process outlined in the Constitution. So going to the Constitution, if money on hand in any fund is not sufficient to pay all non-refunding certificates of indebtedness issued on a fund during any biennium and all certificates refunding the same plus interest thereon, which are outstanding on December 1st, immediately following the close of the biennium. Basically, if there's still debt as of December 1st, after the close of the biennium, so December 1st of 2013, and I'll continue, the state auditor shall levy upon all taxable property in the state a tax collectible in the ensuing year sufficient to pay the same on or before December 1st of the ensuing year with interest to the date or dates of payment. In other words, if our governor and legislature do not pay back the school shifts before December 1st of this year, the Independence Party will file a lawsuit compelling the auditor to balance the budget per the terms of the state constitution. So the, the governor and the legislature have an option pass a balanced budget, or the Independence Party will do it for you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>